Hey everybody, welcome back to the practice. Yay. And uh, very excited, because look who's here. Yay. Tracy's here, which is really <laughs> great. <laughs> Oh, uh, and we're really excited to be talking to you. We obviously couldn't do it on Monday because that was Memorial Day. Well, maybe not obviously, but it was pretty obvious for us. It wasn't happening on <laughs> Memorial Day. <laughs> and, uh, and last week, yeah, last week was we just uh, that was, uh, that was kind of a wash. But so. Tracy's doing much better. She woke up this morning and said, "I feel stronger." I did. So, yeah. Yes. So she's getting some good sleep, getting some good rest, and it's really good. So grateful for all the love that you have sent us in every way, good yeah. gifts and and prayers and texts and dinners and everything. Flowers. It's just been, yeah, flowers. Yeah. Thank you for the flowers. Thank you just so much for all the love that you've showed me. Absolutely. And us. So um, we did want to let you know that um, Tracy's actually going to be taking uh, some time off. Uh, so she's got sick leave. Um, yes. that, that, that we can officially medical take leave. medical leave. So mm -hmm. uh, we've already had one week and so she'll be taking the next three weeks um, off, uh, which will be really good. And so, you know, some of the, the bigger, more, you know, energy sucking things maybe she, <laughs> she won't be doing. I can sit in this chair and make a video. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm basically doing what I can do right now. Yeah, and occasionally yeah. text. So, um, but that, Other so that, than that. That, that, that's going to be, uh, you know, kind of our next few weeks. But we are still on track to have a great summer yes, with the South Orange County Church. ready to go this summer. That's I'm right. I'm planning on it. So Summer Breeze is our plan. Yes. As we head into the summer, we're going to be trying to follow the Spirit and yes. live an open-handed life. Like, yes, okay, God, God, wherever you want to take us, yes. wherever you want to go, we're going to go. And we're just, we're ready to follow you. Exactly. So we're excited about that. So, you know, to get us there... Here's what's happening over the next couple weeks, just so that I make sure everyone is kind of on the same page. So this coming Sunday is June the 4th. It is our Shavuot, our special missions offering service. It's going to be awesome. Uh, the entire Orange County region is going to be at the building. Um, so come early. Please come early. Please come <laughs> early. Um, uh, you can actually park Fellowship. on uh, on Goodyear on the on the church side of the street. You know, on that that south side of the street, you can park there if you if you get there late and run out of parking. But just get there early, get a parking space, come in, fellowship, hang out with people. Uh, it's going to be a great service. So, and thank you to everyone who is sacrificing and being generous for our special missions offering. And, uh, you know, the, the, the churches in Mexico and Central America, yeah. um, they are so grateful for the yeah. help and they're doing great things with that. Um, there's also so many local uh, mission things that we're doing. And, and so it's just, it's a really great time to be able to come together and really give to be able to help God's mission. So I wanted to thank you for giving. Um, you can give online, just find the special missions uh, category and give, uh, or you can bring it on Sunday and come up and drop it in the thing. We'll have the whole ceremony where we'll waving the bread and doing all that. Um, and so it, it's going to be a great service. And I think we're going to have a lot of fun. After the service, we're all going to stick around and everybody's going to have lunch together. We have a meal prepared uh, that is that we're going to, someone else is preparing it, but, <laughs> but it's, it's going to be there for us. And uh, so we'll, we'll be able to have lunch together after the service, which will be great. The following Sunday is June 11th, and that is going to be our graduation Sunday. We're going to be able to celebrate our Heritage Project graduates, which is really great um, to be able to celebrate our eighth graders who are graduating from junior high and moving up to the high school ministry, and be able to graduate our college seniors who are graduating, um, at, or not our college seniors, our high school seniors who are graduating <laughs> and going on to college. Um, <laughs> So that, that's going to be on that day. So that, that'll that be really cool, too. And if there's any of the rest of you who have graduated from, from any anything. program or anything else that you would like to be honored and recognized, please let me know uh, so we can be sure and honor you uh, on that day, which Amen. I think would, would be really cool. And then two days later, on June 13th, is our summer celebration. Yay. So that Tuesday night, we're going to be coming together um, at the park, details to follow, but we're all going to be gathering on that Tuesday night for just a great time of connection and celebration together. And that will be kicking off our summer breeze plans for the summer. So if you could put that in your calendar and make sure that you can be there, that would be great. Uh, then that next Sunday, June 18th, it's Father's Day. That is our first uh, Sunday with our small groups. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to that. I think that'll, yeah. that'll be really great. Awesome. Kicks us into the rest of the summer, um, which will be great. And, you know, I can give you the, the calendar is up. If you want to take a look at that, you can see those. But a couple things I want to call your attention to. 
are our worship nights because we're not going to be having our normal worship on Sunday mornings. And so I know some people are going to miss gonna that. Miss it. I'm going to miss that. So we're going to have two really special worship nights. I'm going to invite some special guests to come and be a part of those. And so I think it'll be really fun. Yeah. So those are on July 22nd and August the 12th. July 22nd and August the 12th. And the flyer is on the Weekly Wave earlier this week. So you can download that flyer and then send that to your friends. Text it, email it, post it, do whatever mm -hmm. you want and invite your friends to come to that. That's going to be open to the entire region if they want to come. So, um, you know, we're going to put that out there for everybody as well, everybody. which would be great. Anyone. And then the other thing, so many cool things in the summer. Um, there's going to be like our VBS this year is going to be one special night and that's on Friday, July 21st. So I know Haley's going to be making a video soon about that to explain all the details. But for families with kids in that age Yay. group, you want to put that on your calendar and mark that. Uh, that. That'll be for the whole family to come together. So we're looking forward to going through that whole, through the whole summer, through August. Uh, you know, we'll come together with the whole South. We'll celebrate. We'll go back to our small groups. We'll have a great time. We'll come together as the whole South. We'll have a worship night. We're going to be doing all this fun stuff in the summer. As we get to the end of August, then school will start. We're not sure where the Spirit's going to take us at that point, but we're excited to follow. Uh, but what we do know is that we're going to family camp on <laughs> September the 22nd. So yes. want to invite that everybody so to come fun. to that. Um, you know, even if you haven't come before, please come. Even if try you feel it. like, oh, no, try we got to do it. it. One just, time. just try it. Just come. So it's fun. such a special time uh, to be able to connect. And uh, so registration details will be going up soon about that. So that's kind of all the stuff uh, that I just wanted to mention to you. Good job, you. babe. Thank that's you very a lot much. coming up. We're going to have a great summer. So where have we been and what have we been talking about? Yeah. Um, we wanted to spend a few minutes um, and just talk about Jesus because, you know, there's all the details that are going on. None of the details matter if we're not keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus and always, you know, constantly learning from him. So we had talked about wanting to go over these four different um, events that happened in the end of John, in the end of the Gospel of John before, before Shavuot. Pentecost. Right. Between the resurrection and Pentecost, we had been... Our our desire had been to cover the four stories that we had not covered. Right. Um, but of course, even though we have those plans in our hearts, God determines the steps and right. we've covered one. Right. <laughs> so, um, but, but we still want to spend a little bit of time there. Both of us yes. have been spending time there over yeah. these last few weeks and it's just been really special, yeah. you know, uh, just the lessons that you can learn, you know, kind of going through all those things. So, so a couple things that we wanted to hit tonight and I think some really good ideas that we can take away that actually I think really do apply to where many of us are right now and even as we're setting ourselves up for the summer uh, some of the things that are really going on with that um, so you know last time we talked about that really weird story um, you know when Jesus breathes the Holy Spirit on <laughs> people and you know so we, were, we were talking about that which was interesting but then right after that it's John chapter 20 in verse 24 uh, it says, now Thomas, also known as Didymus, was one of the twelve, and he was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. And Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. And then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. And blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Mm, I love this story. <laughs> Why do you love this story? I love this because I am Thomas so much. <laughs> <laughs> but every time I read this and, it, and Jesus says, stop doubting and believe. Mm -hmm. It's like one of those one-liners from the Bible that just, it convicts me every single time. Right. Just stop doubting and believe. I mean, I can't believe the number of times I've needed to, to hear that. Right. And, you know, I'd look at, you know, so many things that are going on right now in my life can cause me to doubt. Mm. Um, and I, I also noticed this time when I was reading this that Thomas says, um, unless I see blank, you know, unless mm -hmm. I see the, this, that, and the other. And I was like, oh my gosh, that is just like That's me. That's it, right. Like, unless I see this, you know, <laughs> then I'll know. Or unless I see that, then I'm not going to do this or whatever. I mean, it's just the arrogance of thinking that we know 
and that we need to tell God what he should do right. in order to make things happen. Right. You know, and I just find myself in that position all the time. But also, I think it's sweet because when Jesus does appear later, he shows him exactly what he asked for, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And I think, well, God, you're so sweet to meet me where I'm at because I don't really have any right to be making such demands. You right. know, like, unless I see this, I'm not doing anything. I don't believe, you know, but God still meets me where I'm at and, right. and gives me evidences and calls me back gently, you right. know, to believe. Just stop doubting and believe. I need to hear that right now because sometimes I can look around me and think, oh, I don't know, God. I just don't know. Right. But I don't know. Just a, a it's almost, it's a rebuke that I need. Right. You know, whenever I read it. Yeah, it is good. And we, we, we do get caught up in that of like, well, if, if I see this and this and this, yeah. then I'll actually believe in God. And I think even, you know, many of us, if we go back over the years and look at our relationship with God, we can feel like, okay, well, since this thing happened, I'm not sure that I can trust God. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that, it's that same mindset of like, I have to see things that make sense with my own eyes, yeah, right. or I have to That's see things you. the way that I want them before I will believe that God is good. Yeah. Uh, before I will believe um, that, that that God is working in my life, yeah, um, you know, and those those disappointments turn into doubts. Yeah, um, the disappointments that we have in life they they sneak up on us, and then they start to influence the way that that we believe about the goodness of God. The so disappointments true. turn into doubts. Uh, but I love when you know Jesus here is like it's okay. Yeah, I get it. It's okay. But I he's like I want to invite you instead to actually believe without having to see. Yeah. And there's plenty of other things. I mean, can you imagine all the things that Thomas saw in mm -hmm. those three years? Exactly. Yeah. All the miracles that Thomas had already seen and seen the healings of the paralytics and the blind people and seen the, the 5,000 people fed and seen Jesus walking on the water. Right. And heard Jesus talking about, I'm gonna be raised from the dead. And then, so now everyone else is saying, oh my gosh, he is back, he's alive. Um, Thomas had a lot to rely on. He had a lot to kind of go back to and go, you know what? I think that could be true. Mm -hmm. and I think that's how many of us are. Like, Seriously. you know, we, we forget all of the miracles that have happened yeah. because maybe there's one um, miracle that we're hoping for that hasn't happened possibly yeah. yet. Exactly. And so then that causes us to, to kind of give up and, you know, and stop believing in God and, and, and we start that doubting. Mm -hmm. So disappointments turn into doubt. So go back and track back to see what are the disappointments maybe that have happened in your life that have started to breed, uh, you know, those seeds uh, of doubt that, that can come up. And then, you know, when you hear that, you know, because you can hear it as a rebuke, like stop doubting and believe, like, come on. <laughs> you can also hear it as an invitation. It's a beautiful moment yes. of like, oh man, yeah, come yes. on, stop doubting. Remember all the other good things. Yes. Remember all the good that is done. And there's a reason this one hasn't happened yet but you can trust me because of all the other things that have happened. Yeah. Um, that's what I love about that's this. Good. I think it's good. And then we just wanted to talk briefly about, then the next story in chapter 21, when Jesus, or uh, uh, Peter and Andrew and James and John and a couple other dudes, they just go back to Galilee. They're like, well, we're not quite sure what to do yet. So in this 40, 50 days, <laughs> I mean, they're who like, would know? we're gonna go back to Galilee. Let's just start fishing because we gotta make some that's money. That's what we know to do. Yeah, we, we, do we know, know how to do that. So they, they, they get a boat. They go, uh, go out fishing, verse three, I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. And he called out to them, friends, have you any, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. And he said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. And then, you know, there's the whole thing and Peter jumps in the water and then Jesus cooks up breakfast and, and uh, you know, it's, it's such a, uh, what an amazing scene to think about, you know, 153 fish they, they, they pulled into the boat, you know, all of this. Um, but the thing that really struck me about this as I'm thinking about it is that, you know, they, the disciples were out there fishing. They were trying to do what they needed to do, but nothing happened until Jesus arrived. Right. Yeah, you know, like the, the, the fish didn't come in until Jesus got there. 
and until he pointed them in the direction that they needed exactly. to go. He said, put your net on the right side of the boat. They've been out there all night. They've been working hard. They've been doing everything that they knew how to do. And he was like, put your net on the right side of the boat. Right. And then all the fish came in. Right. I, that's how I feel so many times when I'm like, I'm trying as hard as I can. You yeah. know, I'm so self-sufficient. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm always relying. I'm self-reliant. Uh, but always, you know, working as hard as I can and nothing's happening. And then Jesus comes in. It mm -hmm. just gives a little direction. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me like, oh yeah, I'm doing things my own way again. Right. I'm, I'm using my own effort. I'm relying on my own thoughts. I'm relying on my own ideas and my mm -hmm. own programs. And this is going to work and my own plans and yeah. whatever. And then, I, but I have to, I have to let Jesus speak in so he can shift it. Like, I know, I see what you're doing. Let's try this, you know, right, right. but being able to stop long enough to be able to hear Jesus's voice and then things can shift. Right. And, you know, this is even a couple weeks ago, we had started, we were like, okay, everybody, 10 <laughs> minutes a day. Can you take 10 minutes a day yes. and set aside these 10 minutes and pray for everybody in your small group? Pray for the spirit to guide them. Pray for the spirit to lead them. And uh, it's just 10 minutes a day. Would you be willing to set that aside? And I'm sure that some of you did that uh, for the entire week. I think some of you probably did that for a few days and some of you maybe even forgot and were like, oh my gosh, I did forget that you said that, yes. Um, but the, the reason that, that we even introduced that and that we wanna continue that is because we're, we're trying to get our heart in a posture of hearing from Jesus. Right. Um, that, that we can get to that moment, like where is the Spirit leading us? Yeah. What is it that He's wanting to say if we're out in the boat and we're working hard and we're doing this, but we want the Spirit to actually lead exactly. us. Exactly, and remember that like anything that we're doing, like this summer is all about learning how to walk in the Spirit. Right. Everything about this summer is gonna be about learning to open our eyes to see what the Spirit is doing, open our ears, and just thinking about the fact that like if I have a small group of 20 people that's 19 people praying that I will be able to hear the Spirit that day. Mm -hmm. Like, I need that, you know? I need people praying for me to open my eyes and my ears and to be right. open to what the Spirit is saying. And if we're doing that for each other, just think about what could happen. Right. I mean, it is, it's really an incredible thought. And it reminds me that anything that we do this summer, any success, whatever, that we have will be strictly because of prayer. Yeah. It will 100% be because the Spirit is moving, because Jesus is telling us what to do. It won't be any of our ideas and, well, we decided to do this small group and this time we're going to meet together and all that, all the plans that we have. It's not going to be the plans. Right. It's going to be the Spirit. Right. And that's the whole point of just setting aside that 10 minutes a day. I mean, I'm, I wanna urge you, I'm begging you mm -hmm. to do that. Even if you forgot and you fell off or whatever, please recommit yourself to praying 10 minutes a day for every single person in your small group to be able to hear the Spirit yeah. when speaking. Yep. And then the other thing that we wanted to encourage you to do is to get a book. Oh, yes. Um, there's a really yes. great book. So Mary Maines uh, and, and her small group, the G-Force Women, they have been going through this book um, as, as a part of their, you know, their, just their group and what they're doing. And just uh, the things I've heard about it have been so amazing. And so then we, we got the book and started reading it. And we're like, wow, this is yes. really an amazing book. It is awesome. Um, and it, it's a really great book about prayer. And um, it's called uh, Praying Like Monks, Living Like Fools and uh, by Tyler Staten. And I would highly, highly recommend it. In Come fact, on. I want everybody in the South to get a copy of this book. Yes, so, so um, good. If you can, just go ahead and buy it. Um, if, if you're in the financial place where you're like, I cannot afford the money to buy the book, can't do that right now, let me know, I will buy the book for Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Uh, but if you are in the place and you can invest, you know, however much it is to get the book, just go ahead and do it because it's, it is well worth the investment in your spiritual life yeah. uh, to do it. And I would love for us in the South to all be reading this together as we go through the summer yeah. because it's going to give us a common language and be inspiring us about some of these things all at the same oh, time. And it is so deep. It's such a deep um, dive into prayer. Yeah. And I know all of us are wanting to grow in our prayer life because right. you always feel like, I don't know that I even know how to pray. Right. You know, sometimes. And it is just the most helpful thing. If you want to go 
deeper in your prayer life, it is a great book to have. And yeah. I just think it's going to be so awesome. Just that even if three quarters of us were mm -hmm. reading the same book this summer, what an incredible summer. Absolutely. All right, so that's it. That's all we got for the practice this week. You know, it took us all day to record this video because we're having workers, workers are steer, still here in the house trying to prepare our house. And for some reason today, they, they stayed, stayed until 8 p.m. <laughs> sawing and hammering in the garage. And we, did, and we wanted them to go home, but we wanted them to finish. Right, we too. didn't so want we to ask like, them to leave. Do we say stop? <laughs> we say no, keep going. What do we do? They Anyways. worked until like eight o'clock. I don't know why. That's never happened before. But anyhow, Amen. we finally got the video done. We did good. it, babe. We did it. I'm gonna go to sleep. That's right. We love you guys very much, and we look forward to seeing you on Sunday.